Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants Power. Right, come on now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomont. <clears throat> Let me jump right on in. We were off yesterday. Uh, needed a day to recharge, refresh. Got a lot of stuff dropping today. Um, today is Sunday, the first weekend of the NFL season. And I have my TV on already behind me, so don't mind it. The Dolphins game is about to come on. But I wanted to jump on here real fast to talk about this uh, Deion Sanders, uh, Colorado 28-10 loss to the Nebraska Cornhuskers, a game that was 28-0 at halftime. That was absolutely dominant performance by the Nebraska Cornhuskers. The Colorado Buffaloes are the team that I thought they were. Um, I don't believe now. I told you I still didn't believe last year, and I expected Nebraska to blow them out. Actually, the funny thing about this is when Nick and I did our predictions, he said 40-38. to 38. He thought it would be a shootout. I said 48-30. <clears throat> so I did think it would be – a higher scoring affair. I did think Colorado would score some more points, but I did pick the final margin, 28-10, 48-30. I mean, 18 is 18. I do believe that Nebraska kind of turned off the gas, took it off the pedal a little bit in the second half. They started committing a lot of dumb penalties, although there were a couple that I saw, I mean, that were just flat pancake blocks that were called holding. I don't know what holding is anymore because when a guy gets pancake, it's not holding. It's a pancake. And give the guy credit for a great block. <clears throat> but they didn't do that, excuse me. <clears throat> um, Colorado's not good. I, I, I've said it already. Colorado's not good. They're a 4-8 and eight team at best. They might not win four if, if this is an, an indicator. I think what you saw yesterday was an example of just two different philosophies, two ph- th- philosophical differences in how you want to grow a program and how you want to build a program. How do you want to build a program? You build a program by recruiting high school players. And then you supplement that by the portal, the transfer portal. So, but the problem that Dion has is Dion wants to do this in a microwavable fashion. That's not how it works. You don't build programs in a microwave. You build them through recruitment of high school players, development, and then also, and then also, I think they're showing the, the, the Tyree Kill thing here. Tyreek Hill was arrested, you know, early or detained earlier this morning before the game. He will play, though. But I think it's one of those things where you have philosophical differences in how you develop, start, you know, build a program. And the way great programs are built is through high school recruitment. There's a reason there's still a premium on high school recruitment and why everyone cares about who has the number one class, two, three, four, five, six. No one cares about who has the best transfer class. Generally speaking, the best transfer class doesn't mean anything. Because it's about numbers. And since the majority of his players that he recruits are from the transfer class, he has the best transfer class. And he has it because he has numbers from transfers. But those transfers aren't any good for the most part. Compare, let's, let's give a comparison. <clears throat> the Miami Hurricanes recruit from the transfer portal a lot too. But they also bring in 25 freshmen. They supplement pieces out. This particular year, they have supplemented a major piece, Cam Ward at quarterback. No different than what Dion did last year, supplementing the quarterback with Shador Sanders, which automatically was going to make Colorado better last year than they were the year before with their 1-11 team. Then you have a situation where you're also bringing in Travis Hunter. So you're bringing in one elite player, another much better than what you had before player. I mean, look, Shador Sanders is a – is I don't think he's a great quarterback. I think he's a decent to good one, good at times. Uh, other times, just sitting here like, what is he doing? Um, however, they're though Shador is way better than what they had at quarterback before. That said, you gutted the whole franchise, you gutted the whole program. Took away, I mean, he cut 65, 70 players, like there was. They, he dumped eighty percent of the of the of the of the team. So when people say, "Oh, he he won, he was four and eight with a a one and eleven team," no, he wasn't. He was not four and eight with a one and eleven team. He was four and eight with his team. He literally left the cupboard. The, the cupboard was was empty and restocked with the guys that he wanted <clears throat> and who he, he 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 brought in, largely mercenary transfers. Whereas the Hurricanes. They have a lot of what they have a lot of their players. They supplemented at quarterback, Cam Ward, running back, Damian Martinez out of Oregon, out of Oregon State. And then they supplement this kid, Tyler Horn, out of Tennessee at DN, who's a beast. But that's how you do it. You don't have 
17 transfers and five returners. You have five transfers and 17, five transfers and 17 returning players in terms of starters, or, or yeah, you know, in terms of starters or what have you. So what do you see? You see the exact same thing done last year. Well, this year, where he cut another 50 some odd guys, a bunch of new players again. A brand new team. I doubt there's one player left from that one and eleven team. I completely, I, I doubt it. I cannot imagine there's even a player left. But if there is, it might. There is no more than a few of them left from the one and eleven team. This is his team. He told us that the offensive line was much improved. <clears throat> the defense line was much improved. It's not. It's not. Shador Sanders was running for his life in the first, on the first play of the game. First play of the game. Running from his life. That wasn't the slow defensive lineman from North Dakota State. You keep trying to feed me a bull of shit about North Dakota State being all this. Nebraska is still a Division I, Power 5, or Power 4, or whatever, program. And they brought back a lot of their guys on defense, especially. Why? Because that's called development. It's called development. You have to develop. And that's not something that Dion wants to do. He does not want to take the hard road to build a program. He wants a microwave. He wants that hot dog in a minute. That's not how it works. Because all you have is a bunch of me-first guys who care about themselves. Remember those running backs that he got rid of this past offseason? Look at what he replaced it with. Nothing. They rushed for 16 yards. I think it was 16 yards. or twenty. Was it 22 yards and 16 carries? Or twenty? It was, I'm not looking right now. 16 carries on 22 yards, whatever it was. It was brutal. They got stuffed on fourth and one twice. His first running play was on fourth and one. Like this was a this is just bad, bad game plan. Once again, we're not going to establish a run. So I want to sh listen, show you some of this his post-game press conference. It's just laughable to me because I listen to this thing, and I'm mean, like, the first thing I'm looking for is is he gonna hold himself accountable? He won't. He never says it's on me. When do you hold yourself accountable for this shit, Dion? And I knew what he'd say. I knew he'd say the defense was much better in the second half. Of course he was going to say that. It's the only thing, the only thing he could put, put, you know, put a light on. Because the reality was, I don't know that it was much better. Nebraska committed a lot of penalties, had a couple of big plays called back on penalty, had a touchdown call back on penalty, had a 50-yard pass call back on a, a pancake block. There were penalties that called, I think, also Nebraska to put, to, took their foot off the gas a little bit. It is what it is. I didn't think Colorado would get shut out, but they barely moved the ball. They didn't have they had 260 yards of offense. But here's what Dion had to say. Uh, tough game for us. Came out on the short end of the stick, obviously. Um, starting out, felt good about matchups. We felt good about the competition. We felt good about what we brought to the table today. Game started. Uh, usually we always start out positive. Um, we started, I think, the first ball was deflected. The second ball, um, we didn't bring that in, and it just was just just not a rhythm. Then we came out, and Shador did something very uncharacteristic of, him, of himself. Uh, never makes a bad decision, especially in that part of the field, which they got to pick six. Um, after that, we... You know how you avoid that pick six? Run the ball. Run the ball. Line up under center and run the ball. Put a fullback in there in front of your, in front of your running back and run the ball. That's how you avoid that pick six. It's not a complicated, it's not a complicated situation. Run the ball. But no, you're at the one yard line, you're lined up in shotgun. He makes a bad read and he got baited and he throws a pick six. Is it his fault? Absolutely. It's his fault. He made the throw. But how could that have been avoided? By you running the ball. We're just trying to play catch up. Defense surrendered some things early, but I'm really, really pleased with the way they played in the second half. It seemed like we're a team of second half defensively. We just got to get it going earlier. Uh, but overall, I knew he'd say that. They defense got gutted, man. That first half was an abomination. Nebraska did whatever it wanted. 
whatever it wanted. They are starting a freshman at quarterback. Freshman. They're starting a freshman at QB. Like, these are facts. I mean, it's just when you listen to that type of stuff, um, it, it just makes you sit here and you say, "What? What? What is he? What is he talking about?" You were pl- teams naturally don't when they blow when they're blowing someone out, they naturally just try to coast in for a win, and especially in teams that there is they do have an offensive weapon, so you want to hold, you want to keep the ball from them as long as you possibly can. But again, you're, you're, you're it's one of those things where you sit here and you're like, does he ever blame himself? Does he ever say it's my, I'm me? Oh, certainly not happy with the outcome, but I'm the positive things. Uh, the way we competed in the second half, we had no give up, no quit <clears throat> in us whatsoever. We know we got to do a better job offensively on protection um as well. offensively on protection i thought you said the offensive line was bolstered I th- i'm sorry much improved you wanted to do that thing with that reporter you said it was much improved well that didn't look like a much improved offensive line that looked like the exact same trash can offensive line you had last year it looked like the same type of riffraff garbage you had last year couldn't block anybody they were getting in on a four-man rush the whole game they were put in pressure with a four-man rush. Like, what are we talking about here, bro? It, it's just one of those things where you sit here and you say, shoot, man, are you watching what I'm watching? Or is that you just so desperately don't want to admit you were wrong or it's your fault? You never admit it's your fault. Well, as trying to figure out how to establish a run game and be consistent with that. <clears throat> Oh, no. he just uh, <laughs> he just said that establish a run game. Well, let me tell you about how he establishes a run game here. How does Deion Sanders establish a run game? You know, it's actually kind of funny when you think about it. How does he establish that? You know how he establishes a run game? He throws the ball 30 times in the first 34 plays. He, I'm sorry, he drops back 30 times to throw in the first 34 plays. So let me know. Let me let me ask you, how do you establish a running a running game when you're throw you're dropping back to pass 30 of the 34 plays you ran in the first half? They ran they, they dropped back 30 times in the first half. They ran the ball. And I'm talking about design runs from running backs, not Shador scrambling, escaping, and getting some yards because he got sacked a gazillion times in the first half. At one point, I think he got sacked three times in like nine plays or something like that. You drop back to pass 30 of the first 34 plays, and you're sitting here telling me about how you want to establish a running game. Sure, buddy. No, you don't. You want to establish that Shador can throw for 400 yards every game. The problem is when there's a defense that can actually get to him, he's not going to throw for 400 yards every game. I'm just excited. I mean, I got to find – you got to understand, when you're in a situation like this, you got to find something to hold on to that you can encourage your team. And I'm truly excited about the second half of football that we played. Um, You would have thought offensively would have came in here and and did – half of what we did uh, uh, a week ago, and it would have been a better contest, but it didn't. They had the advantage the whole entire game. It seems as though young kid did a good job with protecting the ball and not turning it over as well. Um, I'm looking at uh, 23 for 30. That's pretty darn good, uh, 185 yards. Um, but touchdown and no turnovers. I'm not happy about um, nine – penalties for 104 yards whatsoever. The game got truly sloppy at the end of it. It seemed like it was just flag after flag after flag. Uh, um, They had 12 for 105 normally with that type of output of of, of flags and penalties. You usually come out victorious, but both of us were horrible. And then I expect third downs, 414 is not who we are. Fourth downs, uh, we had two shots at one point to get a yard, and we didn't accomplish that. 
and that was truly frustrating when we prepared for those type of situations. Uh, we we were in those type of situations in practice several times this week. I made sure we prepared for those situations, but we didn't get it. So it was what it was. Hats off to uh, Coach Rule, um, his staff coached a heck of a game. Look, I mean, yeah, Matt Rule um, did coach a heck of a game. Matt Rule's also developing a program. He's developing a program, and that's something that Dion's not doing. Dion is choosing to go. I, here's the thing: if Dion was recruiting through high schools, I think Dion would get to his desired destination a lot faster. And I don't think, and I don't know why he doesn't see it that way. Is if it's because he's trying to leave this leave Colorado as quickly as possible or not, but I don't know why he doesn't because he has the ability to market. He has the ability to draw people in. Now I think his coaching staff stinks, and I think it starts with him. I don't think he's a good coach, and I think that's part of the problem. He never took the steps necessary to become a great coach or even a good coach. <clears throat> there are steps to this. Like everything else in life, there's steps. You don't become a trial attorney before learning how to doc review. You don't become a trial attorney before learning how to sit second. You don't be you don't become a trial attorney to learning how to take a deposition. There, you're so many things. You don't become a surgeon without the requ requisite classes, the requisite hours, the requisite um, residency, all those things. You don't get to a certain point. You didn't become an elite cornerback in the NFL and arguably the greatest, if not one of the greatest cornerbacks in the history of the NFL without training. And that's what kills me about some of these guys, these athletes. They think that they can just walk in and become great at something without the work necessary to do it. Coaching is hard. Coaching requires special skills with people. You deal with everyone differently. People, in theory, you're like, you coach everyone the same. No, you don't. You coach everyone differently. Now, if you have a bunch of marshmallows that want you to, you know, massage them all the time, that, that's not going to work. But you can't – you have to understand personalities and what makes guys tick and what makes guys do whatever they – whatever you want them to do, you have to know how to get them to do it. You also have to understand situations of football. And while you may understand them as a player, as a coach, it's a different story. I have not coached at the highest level. I coached high school travel basketball at 17U. That is hard. It's hard. It's hard. Even in, in, in glorified all-star games, getting guys to try to play together, guys that are all probably one of the best best or second best players on their high school team, getting them to play roles, getting them to understand, like, look, this isn't about you. This is about our team. You have, you're trying to build a team culture, and he doesn't have a team culture. He has an, a me culture, and that's what he's built. Instagram names on your back, rolling up in Rolls Royces like Shador does. These are all me things. This is all look at me, look at me. Louis Vuitton walks in the red, uh, you know, in, in in Europe while your team is practicing. That's not a team culture. And Matt Rule, I'm just using this as an example because. They drop kicked Matt Rule last year about 22 points in Colorado. They didn't have a quarterback in Nebraska. Quarterback stunk. It was a transfer out of Georgia Tech. It wasn't very good. It couldn't play to begin with. But he kept his guys, recruits some guys, and now you have a dip. Now, I don't think in Nebraska is going to be 11 and 1 or 10 and 2. I think they're probably an eight and four, nine and three type of team. I don't think Nebraska is some great, great, great team. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Rayola is a young, he's still a freshman quarterback and he looked good. And then other times he looked a little bit not so good. Decisions sometimes are, you know, what have you. But I do think they took the foot off the gas. However, you have to look at this from a perspective of are you building a program to win? This is not how you build programs to win. You don't build them through the portal. You don't build them through 70% of your team being transfers. It's just not how it goes. But he wants to do it through the microwavable version, and it's not going to happen. I'm a great guy. Like I said, we came into class together as coaches, so I'm always rooting for them unless they play us. But I'm happy uh, if we're going to get our butts kicked. Might as well be him. God-fearing man. Let's go.
Hi, Coach. Uh, Mickey Edwards, Hughes Sports Report. Just simply, why was it so difficult for the offense to respond to Nebraska's defense? I have no idea. We would have known that answer. I think we would have responded quicker. Yeah, we uh, seemed like we just never got it going until it was too late. You didn't try to run the ball. You never tried. To, and people are going to sit here saying, well, they couldn't run the ball, and they did. You're not hearing me. You don't try to establish the run on fourth and one. You have to make an effort, a concerted effort. First of all, get your ass. I mean, this is a part of the problem. All these guys practicing shotgun offenses, shotgun drills. You need to run the ball more than just hand the ball off on a draw play. I mean, that's how they run the ball today. It's a draw play. It's a draw play, a draw play, a draw play. You have to, you have to mix up your offense. If you're running shotgun all day, yeah, you're probably not going to run the ball that well. You have to mix up your offense. There's ways to run the ball and not be in the gun all the time. There just is. And he doesn't do it. He doesn't do it. And, I mean, look, you got rid of these running backs, and they're not dogs and what have you, but my guy, I, I, I'm telling you right now, the guy you got, the guys you got back there, they're not that guy either. It, they're not dogs. They're, they they might put. I don't know. I don't know. They 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 can't. The kid that forty four offered all. He can't play at this level. He can't play at this level. But you said he was the guy. Like we just never got it going. Protections were were a problem. You know, I'm trying to be polite and say it. Why were protections a problem? You're the coach. Did you not prepare? Because, you know, if I, I can say the same thing you're thinking, but if I said, you say I'm throwing my guys up on the bus, I'm not doing that whatsoever. Protection were a problem. We got to figure out a way to uh, prevent that and do a better job with that. He just said, you'll say that I'm throwing my guys under the bus. You know what I haven't heard you say one time yet, Dion? I have to coach better. Why is acceptance of accountability and responsibility responsibility such a difficult thing for this man it's like it's impossible for him to say i wasn't good i didn't do a good enough job to prepare them for this game i watched this entire 12 and a half minute interview he never says that one time i have to do better i have to do better he even compliments his defensive coaches because they didn't get beat 56 to 10. I have to do better. Why is that so hard? Why? Brian, go ahead. Hey, Coach, I have a couple questions for you. First off, are you surprised the offensive line is not getting the push and the protection that you thought they might get? Um, well, first game, I think they did a good job of protecting. I'm not going to say that. Uh, this game. They didn't do a good job of – see, that's see, that was the fool's goal from North Dakota State. They did not do a good job of protecting. North Dakota State got in the backfield constantly. The problem with North Dakota State is they're a step slow, and that is the difference between Division One AA and Division One. When you got guys who are going to be in the NFL and you got guys that are not, there's not a freaking draft pick on that front seven of the North Dakota State team. Nebraska's going to have draft picks on that front seven. You got faster linemen, faster linebackers. They're getting to him. They got to him because they're faster. So that one extra step that's got him the space to escape against North Dakota State did not exist against Nebraska. And that's what that's bullshit, man. You didn't protect better. You played an FCS school. Now you played an FBS school and you see what the hell happened. And I'm not saying they're going to go one and 11. Although they look like trash, in my opinion. They look like trash versus North Dakota State, in my opinion. They just escaped, got away with it. Because if they were 0 2 right now, people in Colorado might be screaming for this guy's job. And they go to Colorado State next weekend, he better win that game. If they're 1 and 2 after three, this is not going to be a pleasant season for them. Game we did. So um, we hadn't run the ball like we wanted to consistently. 
Um, but very rarely do you have a great running offense and a great passing offense. Rarely you have that. One is going to have to uh, be the lesser of the two. Uh, we got to figure out a way. Does he even know that they, they dropped back to pass 30 times in the first 34 plays? Does he even know that? Does he know that? I know that. Does he know that the first six plays were pass plays? Does he know that? Does he know that his first running attempt was on fourth and one? On a draw? Does he know that? Does he know that 10 of his first 11 plays were pass plays? How are you establishing any type of run, run game when you don't ever try to actually run the damn ball? It's, it's like, what? You don't actually try to run the ball. But you're sitting here saying, I have to establish a run game. Part of establishment of a run game is attempting to actually run the ball. Way to have a, a some type of running game. Because we have backs that can flat out do it. We really do. Like no, You probably let all the guys that could do it go. <laughs> you let the Dylan Edwards of the, of the world go. The Alton McCaskills of the world go. You let those guys go. Like what I like what I saw out of those guys as well. That second question for you. Can you give us something on Shiloh? It also looks like Chidozi went out. And yeah, of- yeah, yeah. Shiloh, I think in reports, uh, I think Harge uh, did something with his foot on one of the punts. Uh, Shiloh, I think, uh, suffered, a, I don't know the extent of the injury, but I know he did something to his forearm that, that put him out for the. I'm sure what Shiloh did was he tried to take someone's head off, which is what he always tries to do. Shiloh's goal is to try to hurt people. Uh, I think we've seen that by now. He tries to actually decapitate your ass on every t- in every play and every hit. So it's not surprising he probably put his forearm in to hit somebody and hurt his arm. I don't know what happened to him. But I know that every time he hits somebody, he tries to kill them. He tries to kill those guys. And eventually, it's going to come back and bite you. You're not like you're 250 pounds. You're 210 pounds, maybe. And again, that's just another example of it's about me. And this is his own son. This is a me thing. His son, Shiloh Sanders, commits a lot of me first penalties. I want to lay the big wood. I want to lay the big hit. I want to lay the ESPN Sports Center top 10 play hit. Yeah, you get hurt doing that. You draw 15 yard penalties doing that. It's a me first game for him. Rest of the game. Chidozi, I think it's a AC joint or something like that. I think he's going to be all right. I think he's going to consequently play this upcoming week. I don't know about Shallow and uh, Shador got dinged a bit on that. Uh, what would they call it? What hit was it? What they call it? Potentially, yeah. Uh, helmet to helmet. What? All right, whatever. Okay, we, we you got the drift of this thing. That this that's more of the same. He never is accountable. That's all. That, that's what this video is all about. At the end of the day. Lack of accountability. You know how your players become accountable is when you become accountable. The way you create culture is by establishing it from the top. The way you create culture is by also recruiting your own players out of high school, guys that you can mold the way you want them to be, rather than guys that you think have been molded for you by previous coaches or just looking for that next opportunity for themselves. I'm a Hurricanes fan. We've had that issue here with the transfers. It's a me, it's a me some game. It's a me some game. And you have to fill pieces around your guys. It can't be filling guys or <laughs> filling uh you have to fill pieces around your guys. You can't be that you're filling your your guys with pieces. Like it's like you can't have more pieces than what you had. Just it's it's a bad move. And until he does that, they're going to lose. They're going to keep being this way. If they go six and six, it's a miracle. I said four and eight. I don't think they're going to go four and eight right now. I don't think they're going four and eight right now. If they go four and eight right now, I'd be surprised. Because these first two games have been utterly terrible. Like, like really, really freaking bad. Anyhow, that's all I got. I'm not surprised. Like I said, at 4830. They got their ass kicked. Not not surprised. What are your thoughts? Do you agree with me? Do you not agree with me? Think I'm crazy. I think accountability has to start at the top, and you'll never have guys being accountable if you're not accountable.
But that's all I got for this one. Leave your thoughts, comments, like this video, share this video, and be back for more today. Come on now.